혹시 로자 씨 보지 못하셨어? 아니 글쎄, W사의 역사에 대해 내 친이 설파해주겠다고 약속했는데 아까부터 보이지가 않소. There's very clearly intent for a W Core Rodian. She just hasn't happened since the W Core Don Quixote was launched, and it has been a very long time. Greetings and salutations, everyone. I'm Mac Mac. This is Limbus Company. Um, new identities have fallen. Ooh, the time killing time extraction ended, but uh, W Core Donny and Rio Hodian are here. So let's see. Gain tremor count, not too much tremor though. Gain tremor count, consume tremor on target to gain tremor count on self. That doesn't quite look nut. I feel like if you want an actual tremor identity, you'd probably go for Encore, uh, Don Quixote. Mind you, this does look pretty nice. But uh, it does actually roll pretty low if you add it all up. Two time memory item. Does not take damage as long as the effect is active. Store all damage received instead. If there is one count left of this effect, trigger tremor burst and deal stack times 15% of sword damage as sloth damage. This also expires immediately after triggering tremor burst and the sloth damage if another time instance of time memoriatum is inflicted. Hmm. I shall summon the time! Gain 4 borrowed time. But it only works while she doesn't have borrowed time. If unit is in borrowed time state, this effect does not consume target's tremor. So this is a weird one. It, it makes you want to use her defensive skill, but the thing is, it's a guard skill, so it's very situational. I don't know. Turn end. If unit is between 10 and 20% HP, instantly heal her 80% and recover from stagger once per encounter. If this unit bo loses borrowed time, gain 8 aggro to one of this unit's skill slots. When the ally with the lowest speed takes damage from enemies with tremor, take 10% less damage. Weird stuff. And for Rodian, she also gains borrowed time and inflicts tremor on a target next turn, that's nice. Consume 8 tremor count on self to gain coin power. Um, Okay, 10 Tremor account to gain 2 coin power. That's a lot nicer. That gives her actually decent numbers. Yeah, prepare to collect, gain Tremor account, inflict Tremor, and if it's a Clash win, inflict Tremor account. I'm not sure I like that because this isn't a decent skill for rolling. Gain Tremor account, gain Clash power for every 6 Tremor on the target, and the coin power. If this unit's HP is between 16 to 20 percent, instantly heal 60 percent, so it's not as decent. But what do you expect? It's a two star. When clashing against targets with time and memoriam, increase clash power and take less damage from them. Wait, there was something else here, wasn't there? Amplitude conversion into tremor chain. Lose clash power for every 10 tremor potency. When hit by skills that trigger tremor burst, raise stagger threshold, etc, etc. Okay. And as a backup, the ally with the fastest speed gains clash power against targets with tremor. Alright, so let's do the stupid thing and throw a bunch of tickets into here. Wow, that's really unfair. Okay, just one more. If I don't get it, then I'm gonna grind off screen.
자, 3등급 직원으로 시간 징수를 맡고 있는 몸일세. 왜 왔는지는 알고 있겠지? 와우, wow, I wouldn't have thought Rodian would be the stubborn one. So let's see. I actually do have 81 crates here, so as long as I break a little better than even, I might get lucky. Ooh. Ooh. Hang on. Show me Don Quixote again? These aren't seasonal identities. These are standard fare, that's really interesting. So don't worry about picking them up immediately if you can't, they won't vanish when the season ends. Okay, so that leaves us free to go straight into their identities and uptie them. So prepare to collect two tremor count, target his tremor, gain cl one clash power, gain one clash power, and gain her passive. And now we gain her skill three. Enhancements to the coin power of skill 1, enhancements to the base and skill power of her skill 2, and her pa support passive. Alright, story time. A restaurant in tea core. By the, behold this glorious piece of steak, it is practically dripping with juice. The child's co-worker cheerfully chomps a mouthful of juicy steak and savors its flavor. I've got to say, we chose a really good and right place for lunch. The other co-worker appears just as jolly as he happily wipes his mouth with a napkin. The food here was, going by the reactions from everyone else, nothing short of delicious. But, the child was glaring at the piece of steak at the tip of her fork, as though she was eyeing something that wasn't even food. This sucks. She probably knows that the steak is, if she could bring herself to bite into it, very delicious. It was simply that the sickly yellow-brown colour of the steak did nothing to excite the child's taste buds. The sepia monochrome steak inspired nothing but disgust which was very apparent from her repulsed expression. After staring and poking half-heartedly at the piece of steak, the child let out a deep sigh and put down her fork. What is it, Rodia? Thou appeareth quite miffed today. It's nothing. I just... guess I just don't have the appetite today. Mmm, that is quite the conundrum. Thine work-related stress might be relieved in some way, no? That's why we have chosen this delicious meal to be our vehicle for joy. Now now, lift thine wine glasses, tis a toast. Like now, it's only midday though. A dash of alcohol in thy bloodstream may help with work efficiency indeed. She's not wrong, it ain't like we get a chance for this kind of outing very often, yeah? Her co-worker was right, Tico employees of different classes rarely dine together. Because they all lived varying hours in a given day, most Tico employees preferred to dine with those living in similar time scales. To dine together without making each other uncomfortable, their only choice was to go to a restaurant under the TT4 protocol. And those restaurants were usually out of low ranking staff's budget ranges. They chose a place that serves colourless foods in hope of saving a bit of money while indulging as much as they can afford to because this restaurant isn't adorned with the expensive colour returning lamps, its prices are on the more affordable side of things. Ugh, fine. Cheers, alright. Cheers. Let's do a toast. The child hesitated, then raised her glasses for a toast. She did not want to be the one to ruin this cheery mood, after all. The brown contents of the wine glass disgusted her still. 
She nevertheless tried her best to suppress that look of revulsion from being too apparent. Of course, it took a lot of effort to maintain that level of composure. And the child rose from her seat. Her food was still untouched. Leaving already? It's the illegal inventions crackdown period, you know. I've got to get back to work or I won't make my time quota. Mm hmm. I did hear that we have been redoubling our regulation enforcement efforts. Try not to overwork thyself. <sighs> Who knows, maybe I'll nab that promotion soon. Anyways, see you around. Uh, yeah, see you around. The child departed the restaurant for the back streets of T-Core. Her job today consisted of conducting on-the-site report verification, contacting the technology administration agency with her findings, and retrieving any and all unregistered inventions. Alright, we'll be confiscating all of your unregistered inventions. As for your fines... According to the updated manuals, ah, it'll be 8 hours for each item, which adds up to 40 hours. Now cough it up. 40 hours? Wasn't it 7 hours per item last time? The high ups raised the fines and tax rates in general. What can I do? What's up with that look, huh? What, you want to take this to the actions office and go through each and every single one of these items? Is that what you want? Well, no, but... In truth... There weren't any changes made to the time tax rates. The child was just giving him an inflated number to skim a little bit off the top for her personal use. Embezzlement is a common practice among the lower ranking, underpaid collection staff at T-Core. They find people for more than they owe and take the surplus time for themselves. Most citizens of T-Core already know this, but they simply allow it to happen because they don't want to risk beefing with a collector which is usually more trouble than it's worth. Besides, you should consider yourself lucky that it's me you're dealing with. The other guys would have tried to rip you off for 10 hours per item or something ridiculous like that. Hey, hands off the timepiece. The child quickly stopped the inventor from reaching the timepiece hanging from his waist. Even the time rich can't immediately make use of the abundance of time they have within the same day. But? If they've already readied and stored enough time the day before, they can accelerate themselves merely by touching their timepieces. But it wasn't his watch that the inventor was going for. Is that a tool? Well, you know what? You can sod right off. I ain't got the time to spare for one of you collectors anyway. That may have been a signal. People holding all kinds of construction equipment slowly emerge from the alleyways of the back streets. Clearly, he wasn't planning to pay the fine anyway. Oh my, you're a popular one, aren't you? You take 40 hours from me, and I've got to live 4 hours or days for an entire week. That ain't living at all, lass. You should be grateful that the 4 hour policy even exists. The child flinched as they began to surround her, but she soon regained her composure and slowly started turning the clockwork on her watch. The clockwork rattles and turns and her body begins to shimmer with after images. The T-Core Collector's standard issue watch. Once she depletes all the time that is assigned to her for the mission, she'll have to resort to using her own time. But the child decided to spend it anyway. I don't want to waste my precious time on people like you, but looks like I haven't got a choice. There is no response. Well, to be more precise, the response was too slow for her to understand. The attackers crowd around her, wildly swing their weapons and tools in her direction, but it's all futile. Moving in condensed time, even for a brief moment, was more than enough for her to casually avoid every sluggish haymaker, every wild swing her enemies attempted. With every rapid step she takes, the greater the fear grows on the faces of her enemies. I know you can't hear me, but I gotta say my piece. You'll pay dearly for wasting my time. Oh, just wait till I'm done with you. And now... We find out what sort of monstrosities that Don Quixote gets up to. So then, she gains Clash Power from Tremor on the target and gains Aggro. 
Clash power from Tremor. If the skill consumes Tremor on target, trigger a Tremor burst and then reduce target Tremor count by one. This doesn't really look right to me. She can't actually inflict any Tremor count on her targets, so... Why? Why are you having her drain Tremor in Tremor count? But yeah, she gets her passive which gives her borrowed time aggro. Actually, let me have a look at what that said again. At one count, gain two borrowed time stack minus one bind next turn. Gain one stack, lose one count. I'm confused to how that's going to work. I'll have to see it on my own time, I guess. I command thee, halt! Support passive and enhancing her skills. Ho there! Art thou home? The child boastfully calls upon the homeowner. She stands in front of a house in some average looking residential area. Blinking her are other uniformed individuals, also patiently waiting for the stubbornly shut door to open. Hmm, I sense naught in the way of responses. I mean, we've kind of been crowding in front of his door and demanding him to come out. Heck, I wouldn't leave my home if I was him. Peace! Speak not of which that thou hast knowest not. There must be aught that nags him. Verily, to said that the hearts of the guilty are telltale hearts. I believe that the same outcome would have awaited me had I visited him all on my lonesome. Well, maybe we don't always have to start our jobs by confidently banging on their front doors like this. There are procedures to these procedures. The child whispered something to the other child standing behind her, before straightening her back and clearing her voice. Hark! I am a T-Core Class 3 staff. I carry with me the authority to collect thy time. I have awaited for thine answer for five minutes upon arrival in accordance with our procedures, and have even produced this identification watch to prove mine identity. Yet thou art to respond in any fashion. Thus do I declare that any further refusal to comply shall be met with swift punishment befitting the cr thy crime of tax evasion. Time Collectors An odd profession unique to T-Core. In this district, the use of time manipulation isn't only for speeding up or slowing down someone's day. Time itself is also used as a currency, and as part of the economic system, it's only natural that it would be subject to taxation. Most people with a time debt are quite good with making their payments. People working for a halfway decent company often have their time expenses covered by the company, or are provided with extra time as part of employee benefits. However, there are two kinds of people who often fail to pay their time taxes. First are those who, in their greed, intentionally maneuver around having to pay their taxes despite having their immense wealth. And the second are the destitute ones, those who could not keep up with the exponentially rising time tax interest. Some may condemn the former and take pity on the latter, but eventually, all choose to remain silent before the seemingly fair and equal notion that the collectors come to claim time from both the rich and the poor. But this system is but an illusion of equality, because an hour's worth to a rich man is quite different from an hour's worth to a poor man. There is nothing fair or equal about this. However, given the confident tone of the child's voice, despite her clear knowledge of this inequality, it is quite likely that the owner of this house is someone of the former category. No responses, is it? Unjust villain! Her enthusiasm is a good indicator of whether the collection target is someone of the former or the latter. Whenever she has to collect time from the latter, her enthusiasm completely sizzles out, and she practically drags her feet to get the job done. Are you sure he's home? Forsooth! I have meticulously studied the time use records of this long-term tax evader. Classification number 973001530307. 
It hath been confirmed that an instance of temporal acceleration was activated within the building a mere three hours ago and remains within the building's premises. In other words, this villain is completely ignoring our orders, despite hearing our every word. The coward hides behind the walls of his home, waiting in bated breath for our departure. You're unusually prepared today. I remember how you were during the Backstreet's collection job. Didn't you stop and complain every few steps that you wanted something to eat? Ahem. <clears throat> now that the homeowner's lack of intent to respond hath been verified. Rodia, ram the gates. Gotcha. Oh, I do enjoy this dorking part of my job. The door shatters to pieces with a large bang. Ugh, what the hell? This is trespassing, I'll have you know. You destroyed my door. Oh, trespassers, are we? Verily, tis quite apparent that thou art aware, unaware that we are allowed to enter thy property without a warrant, should we spy a probable cause. Oh, shit. Still, this is completely unreasonable. How can you possibly justify making me, a kind, innocent, and poor man, pay that much in taxes? This is... Accelerating. The tax evader should not have said that. The child's voice, which has been enthusiastically light-hearted until this moment, suddenly cooled into a deep icy tone. There was a brief click of clockwork before the child turned into a blur, and she burst forth in an explosion of speed as she entered the accelerated time. Hmm, my timepiece warns me that mine assigned hours for work purposes is running low, yet I shan't spare any expense for the likes of thee. The massive pickaxe held in her hand slammed into the tax evader. Were it not for thy health, this collection pickaxe doth not affect thy physical body, contrary to mine wishes that it would, that is. Just as this child said, the pickaxe wasn't touching the tax evader, it was floating slightly above his flesh. Because the dial was set to time collection mode, it won't dish out any physical harm. But his time was getting siphoned up into the pickaxe through that tiny gap, as though it was a syringe drawing fluid into its container. Hmm, kind, innocent, and poor, is it? There's still some time until the proper amount of time is siphoned through the pickaxe, so the child takes the moment to have a look around the house. Several trinkets that immediately caught her eye when her co-worker smashed through the door comes into view. That item there is a limited edition trinket from the famous artisan from the East of the Nest, is it not? It is said that their shop operates only under the highest possible level of acceleration, limiting its sales only to those beyond a certain level of affluence, hmm? Oh, I know that store. It's that novelty store for rich folks, right? The store that just opens it and shuts its doors in an instant so that regular Joes can't even try to enter. Indeed. Certainly, it hardly appears to be a, an item that a poor person may have in their possessions, no? I have aught else to condemn thee with, yet it appeareth that thy time has slowed out of sync with our own already. The child mutters solemnly before dislodging her pickaxe from the tax of Ada. Let the following truths be clearly understood by thee, as thou remains galled here in decelerated time, able to do naught as the world outside passes thee by without an area care. The loss thou hast inflicted upon others in thy greed, in thy extortion of those who are truly destitute, in thy reluctance to pay what is due. Collections completed. Classification number 973-0015-307 Ha! Huh, always genuine joy watching those time-rich dumbasses slow to a crawl after getting bumped by that time pickaxe. Look, it'll take a whole 30 minutes for him to take that next step. The child and her companions left the decelerated tax evader, who was now moving slower than a sloth, and exited the building through the broken door. One must wonder how much it would cost to fix that broken door. Well, that is, if he even manages to make it through the door before the sun sets. Interesting. But yeah, there's the T-Core Collectors. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go run the mirror dungeons a whole bunch of times because that's just the thing I do every week. Till next time, guys. Take care. I'll see you all around.